Hello, everybody. We are doing an ink and marker sketching demo, taking imagery from Moulin Rouge the Musical. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at ArtProf, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. Let's get started with some quick marker sketching as the foundation for the ink sketching. You can see there's my reference photo. And what I like to do, because it is a complicated composition with two figures and this really beautiful, elegant dress, I take my fingers and I move them across the surface of the page to get a feeling of scale. So I'm going to say the bodies are maybe about that tall. And then I want the dress to come down here. That's just an easy way to figure out scale. Because it, it's really hard to do when you've got two figures like this. Super simple lines to approximate about where I want them to be. So let's say Derek Kleina. He was so good in <laughs> the performance, but he's not here to debate. I'm sorry, Derek Kleina. <laughs> I feel bad saying that, but okay. I'm not even making lines, really. I'm touching the paper ever so lightly. My plan for this sketch is to make the dress much bigger than it is in the reference photo. So that actually means that the two figures, they're going to be a lot smaller. And this section, I think I might have his foot be around here. One of the reasons I start out with the marker, it's a way for me to get more control over the image. I mean, if I tried to dive in with ink, <laughs> no chance I would ever make it. Tell me in the chat who here works with ink and or markers and what's your take on them? I was never into markers before. Lauren is the one who got me into them. And ink, I always used ink wash with India ink. So I always thought about it as a black and white medium. But when I had the opportunity to use these acrylic inks, I thought, okay, let's try that out. And I actually really like the colored inks a lot. They're very intense, but I've been using them quite a bit and I like them a lot. So there's a real bend to the figure on the right hand side. And especially his leg is, is really, really bad. I mean, it almost looks wrong. It's so bent but I think that's part of the drama that is here. Big part of her figure is the hair, is super dramatic. And so actually the faces, they're pretty small piece of this image. It's way more about the costumes actually So for now, I'm not going to worry about the faces. I'm going to think more about the shapes that you see. Like there's this division here between the velvet part and the satiny quality. And I want to look at negative shapes. So for example, there's this negative shape that's in between the two torsos. And if I look at that negative shape, that's going to help me figure out the specifics. I think he's way too wide. Sorry, Derek Plato. 
And I do want to get in, just, just approximate her profile. Okay, she looks okay. It's JoJo, by the way. Who here is a JoJo fan? Because Deep D, I guess, grew up with JoJo. I had no idea who she was until we went to see Milan Rouge. And oh my gosh, I'm such a fan. She is incredible. Her voice, she is just this powerhouse. And something about her and Derek Klaina's voices, they matched each other's voices really well. You know how sometimes you have two singers and their voices don't really go together very well? They, they were phenomenal. So while I was dying inside <laughs> that Eric Tabate wasn't there, I was like, okay, they're really amazing. This is, this is fine. I'm not going to complain. This is a really tricky part. I'm trying to look at the distance between their faces because he's tilting down and she's looking across. So that gaze that they have is really important for me to see. I will be answering your questions, but I'll be doing that in between the sketches. Can only do so many things at a time. And I'm looking at the fact that her eyebrow is a little bit higher than his. So that helps me place his eyebrow better. So that's one thing you guys can do. Like if I look at her nose, her nose is also higher than his nose. So if you make comparisons like that, and that can be super helpful for figuring out where things go. Oh dear, that's a gigantic head. Sorry, Derek Kalina. I'm sorry. And yes, I'm following him on Instagram. <laughs> My friend Clar Ogaza, who has been on our pro streams before, she said, Oh, you're, you're gonna crush on him. I, I know it. You're, you're gonna develop a crush. I'm like, no. You don't understand. I'm very, very dedicated to Aaron. Oh dear, that looks like a mess. Oh man, that's terrible. Shoot. What do I do? I guess maybe his chin. Yeah, and I made his eye absurdly big. Faces can be so stressful. You know, when you're drawing a face, and it's the very, very beginning, and it, uh, it hurts to put down the marks because they just look so bad. That's where I'm at right now. I might go back in with acrylic afterwards, but for now, I'm just going to focus on the marker. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry, Derek. Let's go to his scarf. Did you know <laughs> that they auctioned off Aaron Tveit's scarf for $10,000? It's like, wow, I wish I had $10,000 <laughs> to buy Aaron Tveit's like wow this is very impressive people <laughs> I mean it was for a charity auction like Broadway carriers or something like that which is really cool I was like how come I can buy his scarf why don't I have ten thousand dollars to spend Okay, so Ilsa grew up with Jojo, the pop star. I think the generation she really reached was the millennials. That's what Deepthi told me. Manette says, I shy away from markers because I'm used to watercolors and markers don't blend like that unless you specifically have a blender or use water. And it bothers me since it's not what I'm used to. It takes time. Markers are not something you can pick up quickly. And it wasn't until I logged several hours before I felt like I had any clue what was going on. Jay King says, my mom always loved making pieces with watercolor pencils and ink. I haven't used the watercolor pencils that much. I feel like I should, because in theory, they're really cool. 
<laughs> just haven't had the chance. Kusai says, I would love pencils over ink because it allows me freedom of correction anytime I'm learning to draw. Well, what I tend to do is I'll do a marker sketch like this, do ink over it, and it's surprising the markers go over the ink and acrylic really well. I wouldn't have guessed that was the case. So it's almost like the sandwiching of ink and markers. That's really, really fun. <laughs> Lady Kimono buys ink by the 16 ounce bottle. <laughs> Karasu uses Copics and Micron pens. A scarf and tea. I've only used ink with a dip pen or tech pen. Would love to try it with a brush. It's really fun, but it's a little stressful because you cannot go back. <laughs> you know what? Aaron Tabate, he, he's in a whole other universe of focus. <laughs> like I can't work on the Aaron Tabate pieces because it requires a lot of focus. Like this, this I'm like, okay, Derek Clayton, you cute, fine. I don't have to get distracted. Thank you so much, Jay King, for the super chat, who says, what? I met Aaron Tveit backstage when he was performing, and he was, oh my God, don't tell me that. That hurts me. Oh my God. He was the sweetest guy ever. He, oh my God, don't tell me he's even better looking in person. <laughs> like, how is that possible? Oh my God. <laughs> Why did you get to meet him backstage? Oh my God. I'm just gonna cry right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the super chat and the story, J. King. So much appreciate your support. <laughs> Ilsa says the tiny scarf with the open throat chest plus long coat is so funny to me though. Is it cold or hot? I know it's like that scarf isn't really helping very much. It must just be a fashion decision. <laughs> I know I've analyzed that outfit quite a bit because I've had to paint it several times. So this is not for the commission that I'm working on. This is more me playing with materials, getting to know the show a little bit more because yes, I saw it, but it's a little different when you sit down and draw something. I was like, okay, you can't just draw Roxanne in her to be forever. You have to expand beyond the show. <laughs> like, get into some other areas. Okay. Let's get back into these proportions. And actually, I need to take a progress photo. Don't always remember to do that, but it is very, very helpful. I'm wondering how many people here take progress photos because I find them not only just for social media, but they help me as an artist going back and seeing the various stages. I have found that extremely helpful. And I know for some people it, it does feel disruptive to do that, but it, it helps me a lot. So I think even if social media didn't exist, I think I would still do it. Oh gosh, Derek Klena. I just moved his face over. <laughs> yes, this is gonna need acrylic paint. I'm not gonna be able to rely on markers for this. I mean, for real, I think the reason I'm using acrylic is just so I can cover up all my mistakes. And it's, it's very good for that. I think oil, it's much harder to fix things quickly. With acrylic, I can just say, oh, I don't like this. I'll just paint over it right now. And with oil, that's so much harder to do. Yeah, okay, that's what happens. <laughs> He's got like three heads <laughs> that are moving around. <laughs> So who here, like me, has a Moulin Rouge problem? <laughs> it's a problem. But you know, now that I'm doing the commission, I'm like, oh, it's research. I have to watch multiple Moulin Rouge clips on YouTube all night, right? It's research. Research is very important. Okay, I'm getting a little fixated on their faces, so let's move on. 
and get her glove in there. By the way, this is not a photo that I'm working from. This is actually a screenshot I took because they do have publicity photos that they shoot that look amazing. They're by professional photographers. And the people there, they were like, oh, we can provide you with photos and stuff like that. I was like, okay, great. But the thing about the PR photos is that they're a little bit posed for good reason. I mean, you can't take really good photos when people are dancing <laughs> like crazy. I mean, maybe you can, but it's obviously harder. But the thing about the screenshots is that, yes, the resolution is much lower, but you really get the gesture. And that is something you cannot get from a still photo. So if you want to see some of the screenshots that I took, the link to the reference photos, it's in the video description. And oh my gosh, I spent so long trying to get the right screenshot because I'll watch the video and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's, that's the pose I want. But then it's like timing the screenshot to get just the right pose is really, really difficult. So it, it's literally, it's just me standing there. I think his head is way too big. Yeah, oh God, what a mess. Maybe, ugh, the head is really confusing me right now. I might need to go in right away with some dark brown, just clean it up a little bit. If I don't, I think I'm just going to be lost. But I think if I extend his pants, oh, that looks too long now. Because the thing is, in the photo of him, again, those pants, they just look like flat black. There's no information there for me to work with. So that might be where I just get a little crazy, make it a little bit looser, because I'm not after something that's super perfect. Okay, let's head back to her head. I just love her hair in this show. Jojo has a really good Instagram, actually. I really like what she posts. And she posts all these videos of her getting her hair done. And it's just, like, beautiful. I feel pretty good about her. I don't feel good about him. He's a mess. Oh my gosh. I think his head is just way too big. This might be one of those things that I repaint eight times, which I've done in several cases. Thank you, Anna, for the super chat. Anna is asking, what are your plans for the final piece? Can't tell you. Sorry. You'll find out in July. I really want to share it, and I'm going to document the whole thing, but I can't release any of it until July. Well, so here, here's something I can ask all of you without revealing anything, okay? With illustrations, I, I always think to myself, well, there's the epic way <laughs> to tackle an illustration. For me, an example of that, I don't know if people saw Kadir Nelson's New Yorker cover after George Floyd was killed. And oh my gosh, that, that painting is extraordinary because it's an image of George Floyd at the top. And then there's this like big silhouette and there's all these faces from history. I mean, I can't imagine how long that piece must have taken painting all those individual faces. So to me, that's an epic piece. But then there's this little part of me that says, hey, simple, to the point, blunt graphic. Sometimes that simplicity can grab people in a way. So what do you prefer? Do you prefer those epic pieces where you're trying to encompass everything and there's 10 figures? I mean, there's a lot of characters in Moulin Rouge that you can include. Or is it really simple? 
one thing to the point. I don't think one is better than the other. I'm leaning towards epic just because the show is epic. Has anybody here seen the show? Because it's just, I'm, I'm like, how, how do people pull this off? How does this happen? I mean, I guess that's why the tickets are $500. So tell me, epic or simple? Oh, Lady Kimono says, I have folders of people moving in clothing where the photographer managed to take crispy pictures of the moment. I love them. I did pay for those photo sets. Oh, I'm sure you've got to be a really good photographer to do that. Counselor says, good to see you make mistakes. I need to see how to fix them because I make much worse mistakes. Oh, you have to. There's not a single artwork I work on where there aren't multiple mistakes. But that's critical in teaching is to show people, okay, here are the mistakes that might happen. Here's how you fix them. Because the fixing part is the most important. Otherwise, you're constantly worried about making a mistake and then you're not trying different things. But if you know in your head, oh, yes, I can fix this. There are options. Because I know sometimes you make a mistake and it just feels like Ragnarok. It's like, ah, <laughs> everything's out the window and it feels that way. But there are ways to fix that namely acrylic paint, <laughs> to cover over all of your mistakes. Okay, so Ginger says, impressed by simple. Doing something simple, making it feel done is so hard. Lara says, epic. Okay, J. King, oh my gosh, J. King. I'm never gonna forget what you told me. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna get into it right now. <laughs> Soitin Lee says, epic. Yeah, depends on the mood. For Moulin Rouge, go epic. It's baked in the show. Yeah. I mean, there are intimate moments, but they're not that many. And I feel like it is more about the spectacle of the show. Yeah, Anna says both can be powerful. That George Floyd painting reminded me of Enser or Liberty Leading the People by Delacroix. I'd go with epic. Oh, you know, Kadir Nelson did a piece of cover for Rolling Stone, which was a clear homage to Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People. <laughs> I love Kadir Nelson. I mean, for real, I'm getting major imposter syndrome because I love Kadir Nelson's work so much and it's so powerful and beautifully. I'm like, oh man, they should just hire Kadir Nelson. <laughs> he would do a much better job me. And I've never really done an illustration gig. So this is really terrifying, even though I have a BFA in illustration and I taught in the illustration department for years. It's really bizarre. Oh, they didn't let me take photos. That was not allowed. They have all these union restrictions. But these are videos that I've looked at on TikTok and Instagram. I was taking screenshots from there. All right. I know sometimes I tell people not to stress about proportions, but I'm going to stress about proportions. <laughs> Can't help it. Well, because it, this never occurred to me really for fan art, but the, the characters have to be recognizable. I mean, if you don't represent them well, oh gosh. The fans, they, they are really intense. I did not grow up with internet fandom. And so when I discovered this whole world of, I was like, wow, these people are intense. They are really, but I'm like, it's great. I don't have to do anything. I just follow all the air debate fan accounts and I'm like all set. I don't have to look for anything. It's great. I'm like, thanks for doing all the work, you guys. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Oh, yeah, his head is gigantic. I got it. Yeah, see, if I look at her top of her head, so her hair comes up like this. Yeah, his hair is a lot lower. It should be more like this. 
out this is gonna need acrylic paint at some point leaning back to squint a little because when you're trying to get this sure you have to step back you can't get sucked in because i really really need to look at the placement of things i think i put her arm way too high so let's move that down a little bit And for the dress, I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to hint at some of the direction, some of the, the main folds, not the little ones. But I do need to have a feeling of, okay, these strokes go in about this direction. Costumes are incredible. I, I don't know how they do it. And then especially if you're going to be dancing that much, I can't imagine that they can make the costumes restricted. They probably have to be super flexible. So here's my Aaron to make plan. You want to hear? <laughs> I'm going to do all this fan art. <laughs> And you know something, everybody, hashtags work when it's something this specific. I mean, if you do hashtag art, I don't think that's very helpful. But I mean, that's how they found me for the commission. It must have been the hashtags because I've been tagging them like crazy. So my my first tier air debate plan is I, I just want to like, because <laughs> they're going to put it on the main account and he follows the main account. Of course, I know this. I just want him to like it. That's all. If he does that, I'll be so happy. <laughs> that is my plan. Okay, Derek Kleina, I'm sorry. <sighs> what do I do with your head? I'm going to pull this down a little so you can all see in greater detail what's going on. And I'll put it back when I start doing the other things. Oh, her arm is way too big. Yeah. It's hard because I'm trying to see what lines up because this top part of her dress. Okay, so her elbow lines up with his jacket like that. By the way, everybody, I have been using watercolor paper a lot for the acrylic paintings, but this is actually Reeves BFK, which is printmaking paper, and it's a cotton rag paper. I was just curious because I love this paper for printmaking, obviously, but it's absorbent in a way that watercolor paper is not. Watercolor paper, you paint on it, and it's more gliding across the surface. This is like absorbing, like a sponge. So I was just really curious how it would behave with the acrylic inks. Oh, okay, so his jacket needs to come down because it lines up with this part of her dress. Okay, let's bring that down to a clean. I'm not gonna develop a crush on him. He's very cute. I mean, he's, I can totally see why people would do it. He's so charming and really, really cute. And a really great singer, but he's not Aaron. <laughs> oh, you know something? I didn't make this. It's not long enough. Okay, hang on. Oh, the hip is more like this. Okay, I think I made it too wide. Oh, yeah, that's better. Okay, I think I had it out too far. And you know something, this is not about accuracy. This is more about capturing their gesture, them dancing together. That's what I'm really after.
Okay, let's get more specific with her hair. So I'm a JoJo fan now. I think she's amazing. And the way she dances, oh my gosh. She's just got this powerhouse energy. It's extraordinary. I mean, I, I don't know how people do things like that. I'm totally mystified. I mean, I know as an artist, people are like, I don't know how you do I'm like, I don't know how you guys do that. And do it with so many people. I mean, it's the ultimate group effort. So yeah, I'm over fan art <laughs> being cringy. <laughs> I think it's just, it's a stupid ivory tower that I was in for so long. I mean, I feel like in a lot of ways, art school sort of messed me up. It's almost like, maybe this is too dramatic of a word, but it almost feels like you get gaslit into thinking certain things in art school, thinking you should do this or that is always bad, or this is the only way to do it. It's like for a place that's supposed to be so creative, it's really close-minded. And I know that there were so many hangups I had that I carried from being in academia that held me back. And I'm so glad that I'm here with all of you. And we're not doing that. Okay, squinting. Face is bothering me so much. I mean, faces drive you crazy. Who here <laughs> draws faces and feels like you're going to have a meltdown every time you sketch a face? Because I do, even though I love drawing faces. It's a really strange thing. Yeah, I need to be a little closer. I mean, he's such a mess right now that I don't know that I can do that much. I just want to place his chin. Yeah, I think I got to get into some darker colors because I don't think it's going to happen. All right, let's try a brown that's just a little bit darker. And what I always, always have to do is come in here and test the colors. That might be too dark. Ugh, that's like puke green. Because you know something? The color of the cap, it never matches <laughs> what the marker actually does. I just never trust it. I mean, there are some colors where you, you're like, really? That's not even close. Which is fine. I, I mean, I'm sure it's not easy to do. This might be, yeah, that's not going to show up. Well, maybe a gray would be better because then there's a color change. Yeah, maybe I'm going to go with gray. It's too light. That was a little bit lighter. No, it's exactly the same. I want something just a little bit lighter. Oh, too light. I need something in between that and that. Okay, that's better. Let's use this one. Okay, I hope. This is the part you got to draw really, really slow. In fact, I can come in closer so you can all see that better. There. Oops, now you can't see me. Let's not do that. It's too low. Okay, we'll stick with that. Sorry. Tough on the live stream to get exactly the range that you're looking for. Here, clean up. I can do 
Let's address this. I really need this chin. To work because the chin is pretty pronounced and his jawbone mandible so now to move that and I've got to make sure that I don't make his eye too big I made it gigantic the first time through A young guy, he's actually, I think he's like 30, but he's very hunky. I mean, so it's hard to make, <laughs> although it depends on what show he's in. He's got some shows like he was in Graceland and he's ripped in that show. He's not as ripped for Moulin Rouge, obviously, I think, because he is a different body type for. All the dancing and everything. Okay, does everybody see he, he's in there? Like I, I see his eye started here and then I moved it over here. <laughs> but you have to do that. I just love the clothing. I think another thing about the show is they have such a cohesive color scheme. There's tons of red and there's a lot of purple. It's very sumptuous. And we've talked a little bit here about color schemes and how helpful they can be because oftentimes it gives your piece a certain degree of focus. That's really hard to get if you're just using every color in the rainbow. Okay, I made his eyebrow way too big, but that's okay. I can fix that easier later. And up here, I'm just going to put a couple strokes to show the hair a little bit better. Just to show the direction. Again, not anything that critical. Ugh, his nose is too big. That's all right. That's where it is for now. My plan is to be really tight in the faces and then just go nuts down here with the ink. Definitely need some acrylic paint to bail me out here. I mean, this this part is just so freaking slow. It's just constantly reevaluating where things are. I still feel like his face is too big. Whatever, I'll fix it later. Now for her, you can barely see her features. They're, they're really, really small from that angle. So she's actually not gonna get that much in terms of articulation. He, he's actually much more prominent. Oh man, she's too small. Too small compared to him. That, that's the important thing is you have to say, okay. Yes. Yeah, this, this is going to turn into an acrylic painting <laughs> because I messed up so much. <laughs> but that's okay. I've been having a lot of fun because I've been mixing marker with acrylic ink and acrylic. And it's actually been a really good combination. They do blend with each other very well.
see what people are talking about here. Karasu is asking about MICA. We do have a video where I interview a MICA student. So just type into YouTube the search bar, Art Prof MICA, and you'll find it. Yeah, Amanda, oh my gosh. People would have ridiculed you so much. I mean, I'm sure people in art school do fan art, but it's not something you would ever bring into class as an assignment. Seven Angelic says, fan art has always felt like pure joy to me, showing your own joy in something and reaching out to find people who are as excited about the same thing. Well, the whole thing about fan art that I discovered, it really is its own culture because I was looking up illustrations of Moulin Rouge just to see what was out there. And there was a New Yorker review that had an illustration of Moulin Rouge. And so in my head, visually, you could say, well, they're both images of Moulin Rouge. How is that different? I think the only difference is the motivation. So that's somebody who got hired by an art director. Maybe they know nothing about Moulin Rouge. And I'm just doing it because I like it. <laughs> and so ultimately, like, why does it really matter what the intent is, as long as you're making work that interests you? So a lot of it, I actually think it's not so much fan art is its own thing, but I think the context that you make the work in, that's the difference. So again, if you're painting something just for yourself versus, oh, you got a commission to paint something or you're painting it because you're trying to practice your painting. And so ultimately those three things, they might look very similar to each other, but the context and the purpose, the motivation for making those images is very different. And I just don't think we should judge that one type of motivation is better or less worthy than another. I just think fan art particularly has a culture surrounding it in a way that say editorial illustration does not. How do you fix that man's eye? With acrylic, <laughs> that's how you fix it. Ah, oh, thanks, J. King. Always watch your live streams while I paint. Helps me be more productive. A lot of people have told me that. They'll have our podcast or streams on in the background. And you know something, <laughs> to be honest, I never understood it. I was like, why? But Jordan, he has a YouTube channel. You should all check it out if you don't know about it. He does live streams on Sunday. And I always remember, oh yeah, he's going on. And so I'll just sit at my computer and work. And it's true. It, it's something that keeps you more on task. And it just feels less boring because some days I'm at my computer and it's so boring. And so having people there chatting, it's actually really nice because you don't have to chat the whole time. You just chat when you feel like you get up and leave if you want. Yes, J. King forever. You will be the person to me in my head who met Eric to be <laughs> oh gosh oh i know the stage design actually now i'm following the set designer derek mclean and I, he's like a broadway legend he's designed all kinds of things but i am definitely going to do a deep dive on that he just published a book i think it was called designing broadway and i'm just fascinated because it's architectural but it's also decorative in a way. Like one thing that I noticed that they had that was so beautiful is they had these like gilded babies <laughs> in the theater. But I noticed when I was at the show that there were windmills that were carved in between the babies and little Easter eggs like that are just so much fun. So there's the construction of it, but then there's the lighting and then the utilitarian version of it. And then needing to show the illusion of depth. They had some parts of the show where you could see like Paris going all the way back in the distance. And then they have other things like, okay, Satine's bedroom. And I found that fascinating that they would create that wide of a range of depth with just the stage. I mean, stage is not that deep. 
Yeah, I like that, Carolyn. I like having someone in the background. It feels like I'm less alone. Absolutely. I mean, there's only so much time you can spend in a room by yourself. <laughs> I go a little bit crazy after a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> Watching a stream, not chatting is called lurking. I love it. Great. Thanks, Lady Komodo. Well, we had a meetup in Toronto last week when I was in Canada. And it's so fun because there are people who I know pretty well and I've interacted with them quite a bit on the Discord. And those are people I knew before. But then at every single meetup, there are people that show up who I've never interacted with. They've never commented. And I think that's fantastic because, yeah, I mean, not everybody wants to leave comments and do various things, but it is really nice to see that cross section of our audience. So Kusai says the lady's shoulders, I don't know why it bothers me, the shape of it. It doesn't look like very close to the picture, but the rest is going great other than that. Well, that's an important thing to bring up. And so I'm glad you mentioned that. But it's a funny mix of wanting to be faithful to the reference photo enough that, okay, we know it's Christian and Satine, but also being open enough that you're not picking at the proportions. Because I could pick, but I can tell you that when I pick, it drives me a little nuts. So sometimes I have to ignore that stuff because otherwise it just becomes a, this is off, this is higher, this is too left. And that can get in the way, I think, sometimes of really developing the piece cohesively because then you're just comparing things with the reference photo. You're not really interpreting the reference photo. It's a very different thing. Amanda says, I always draw my heads bigger at the beginning because when I paint figures, I naturally paint my heads too small call it tiny head syndrome. It's looking great. Oh, for me, it's big head syndrome. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Let's start to solidify the placement of some of these areas. I'm not going to do too much with the gray. I'm just using it to emphasize specific parts, like this crease in the armpit. Oh, and actually there's this little triangular part of her outfit that I'm gonna put in. I think that might be helpful as a reference. Really, I think, oh, why is he giving me so much trouble? I feel like she's been a lot easier to deal with. Maybe just because his outfit is a little bit more involved than hers. Hers is so flowy and elegant. It's like you almost can't go wrong. But his has the vest and all that stuff. So yes, this, this fan art thing, <laughs> it sort of spiraled out of control. I don't know if people have seen, but I did a bunch of paintings of the theater itself. And that was really fun. I actually didn't anticipate doing that. I just sort of thought, oh, I'll go and get a sense for things. And, and actually, this is really cool. They let me draw in the theater before the show happened. And I had to push for that. They didn't offer that to me. It's a lesson here. Ask for what you want. It works sometimes, and if it doesn't, no skin off your back. And again, I can't share those either, but I will soon. In July, when everything is out. But so that was really fun for me, because one thing that I think is really interesting about New York in particular is you'll go to this place and it looks like nothing on the street. You can barely tell. And then you go in, it's like, oh my God, this big <laughs> atmosphere. And I, I find that that's a New York thing. I don't think that's the case in a lot of places. And that just sort of blows my mind. So the theater was sort of similar. 
the theater. It's on the street. I mean, it's a beautiful theater. But then you enter the theater. It's just like, oh my gosh. There's this whole world hiding behind. And I, I just really wanted to show that contrast because the show, the performance, that's one thing. But then going to the theater itself and, and seeing the ambience of the street, I, I think is really, really interesting. Okay, I think his proportions are better with his legs. We gotta figure out these hands legs a mess right now. And oh boy, I really have to look at the fingers and do a good job because that's not something I can mess with. The arm is at a really weird angle, but that's okay. So that's the other thing is sometimes I don't even plan what I want to do with the material because at first I thought, oh, I'll do marker and then I'll add ink. And now I'm going, oh, this is a mess. <laughs> I can't just do that. I need to include acrylic and that's fine. You don't need all your plans to work out. In fact, mine rarely work out. So yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, well, I'm glad you all confirmed for me to go epic. Because the other part of me was saying, oh, it's going to get too busy and it's going to not have an impact, but I'm sure there are things I can do with the composition. But yeah, I got a lot of work to do and I only have a month to do it. The other thing too, I think some of you may have seen, but I'm going to Japan <laughs> at the very end of July, at the very end of June. I'm like, oh crap, I have to get ready for this trip because an international trip is so much work. And plus Japan is such a different place. If I was going to Europe, I wouldn't worry so much because I've been there. But in Japan, I, I don't know anything. I've been there before. I was there maybe in 1999. I went when my sister was living there. But that was a really long time ago. And plus I'm bringing two teenagers, <laughs> which makes things very, very different. Okay, let's get into her hair. So we're gonna switch colors. Again, we're gonna test the colors. I'm gonna make it more vibrant than it actually is. So I might actually start, ugh, that's terrible. I need like a, I don't know, this might be too yellow. Yeah, ugh, it's gross. I need something more peachy? No? I need orange. Like, why don't I have, you know something? What if I do this color and then maybe if I do yellow over it? Ugh, that looks terrible. Or maybe pink? Pink with yellow? Oh, that's gross. Yuck. Try this one. Okay, that's dead. Nice. Good. Might be this color. Yeah. Well, okay, let's let's use this one for the hair. And then we'll get like a reddish brown. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so we'll have this red and Ugh, that's not good. I think I want another one that's a little bit lighter than this one. Uh, is that too similar? No, I don't like that one. Maybe I need like a dark, dark brown. Ugh, gross. That's green. Try this. Ugh, that's dead. Come on. Why is there <laughs> no dark brown? Maybe purple? Ugh, that's dead too. What the heck? I can't sign. Like, I don't want to use black. Why is everything dead? So, yeah, see, like, that's the one I want, but it's not dark enough. Okay, well, let's just start <laughs> with these two. Maybe I'll do the dark with acrylic ink. Let's see. Okay, this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is the fun part, is getting in here. And I'm going to try to be really simple about the strokes. I 
Okay, her hair is so fun to draw. What I might do, uh, I'm trying to think of whether I want to put like water over this to loosen it. I'm not going to do it right now because I feel like it's too soon, but that might be an option. This is what you get when you've worked hard to get the other stuff established. And really, when it comes to hair, you almost can't go wrong because it's just all these curls and you can't mess it up. I mean, you can mess anything up, actually. Oh, super fun. Love that. And you know something? I am going to put in a little bit of her choker. Again, we have to find a color that works. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> Because I do think the choker is a really important color to have in place. So it's not so much that I'm trying to draw the choker, but I just want to have that color reference so we get that red up there. I'm going to do the same thing with the dress. It's just begin to hint at some of those colors. So at the very least, that's like a placeholder that I can do. And I think I'll do some of the dress, but not a lot because I do want most of the dress to be the acrylic ink. Oh, see, I destroyed all my reds. I need to go buy like eight reds because there's just so much red. Ugh, it's pink. Yuck. Ugh. Maybe I shouldn't do it in color with marker. Okay, let's just do a couple strokes. I'll just do a couple marks like this to hint but nothing more than that. I'll do the rest in acrylic ink. Because that just gives me a little bit more of a roadmap so I'm not totally lost. And this part I'm gonna make super flowy, but down here I'm gonna articulate these folds down here, I'm going to make those more crisp. Okay, so that feels a little bit more solid than what I had before. Maybe a little touch just to indicate some of the red in the makeup. All right, let's get in a few darks in the hair. I think especially up here at the top. Oh, okay, there's quite a bit up here too. Okay. Yeah, she's, she's so much easier to draw than he is. I wonder if it's because his pose is a little strange, but I liked it. I liked the shift because they have publicity ones where they look a little stiffer and I just really really liked this pose
that feels good. I like this. Some fun. The beginning of a drawing is so much grunt work. And it just feels like nothing's doing anything. But then it's like you got to do this and it's like, yes. <laughs> feels great. I feel like her hair is easier to draw because it has such specific shape to it. I think sometimes when hair is all over the place and not so styled, it's actually hard to draw. There's this little concavity in here, but there's a little scoop. I'm going to try to emphasize. And actually, back here, it gets pretty dark. So I'm trying to look for some of the darker shapes. I have in. And these markers blend pretty well. So you can see right now I'm putting this color on top and it just blends right into the cranberry colors. So they're, they're very easy to use together. Like up here, I can make a transition pretty easily. Kara Sue's asking about transferring from community college to art school. Should I call the community college or the art school first? I would do both because really the whole thing about the transfer process, it's so specific to the school. Some schools want you to not transfer and start from the beginning. Some schools don't do it. Other schools do, or you have to declare your major. So I would just really do your research. That, that's the best way to do it. Paula says it can often be harder to figure out what to pick out from a reference photo versus what not to pick. Requires active thinking versus just copying a reference photo. Exactly. And so you have to pick and choose. Okay, this is something from the photo that I really, really want to keep. This is something that's not so important. And so assigning degrees of priority is hard. It's not an easy thing to do. And yes, marker struggle, it's real, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, Jane, I did start it from scratch. I know that makes for a more boring stream because <laughs> it takes a while for me to do anything, but I think that's important for people to see, okay, how do you go from a blank piece of paper to that final artwork? Because sometimes people, won't show that part because it's boring, but I think you need to see it. You need to see it's a mess. So oftentimes I see on shorts, people just do that one thing. Like <laughs> this is really common, you know, when they're doing a photorealistic eye painting and they show you how they put that one little dot of highlight at the very end. It's like, yeah, that's fun, but how did you get there? That's what I'm interested in from an educational point of view. Paula says, what is the advantage of using printmaking paper versus watercolor paper, mixed media, et cetera? Also, other Tombow pens, the water-based ones are alcohol. They're the water-based ones. The water-based ones, they all have this black color. The alcohol ones are gray. So that's usually the best way for Tombow to know the difference. I think the difference, so you've got printmaking, watercolor, and mixed media. It has to do with absorption. So watercolor is a stiffer paper than printmaking paper. Printmaking paper is very absorbent. So think about printmaking paper almost as a sponge. Watercolor paper, things sit on the surface a little bit more so you can push things across the surface. Mixed media paper is generally much thinner than printmaking and watercolor paper. 
And it usually has a very smooth surface, not super smooth like Yupo, but most watercolor paper has some degree of texture. I mean, there's certainly hot press, which is pretty smooth, but mixed media paper is like even more smooth. It's a lot. Paper is complicated, especially for us paper nerds. Yeah, counselor says, always want to see you start from a blank page. That's where I start from. That's where we all start from. And we have to see the stumbles that happen along the way. Oh, Jane says, did study abroad there in 2003 and loved it. Oh, it's so different than any other part of the world I've been to. I mean, for real, it's, it feels like a dream when you're there. Everything's just so, so different and surrealistic. It's incredible. Okay. Let's get back into some of the colors. Oh, I need to take a progress photo. So you can all see the hot mess that is dried. There we go. I do want to do some ink. You know, let's just get a little bit more done on him. He needs hair and the arm as well. So let's work on his hair a little bit. Okay. So his hair is not so red. It's a lot more brown. Let's test out. Ugh, that's bad. That's okay. It's not quite dark enough, though. Oh, maybe this. I hope this is dark. Oh, God, that sucks, too. Come on. That's too gray. Let's try this. Oh, that one's... I need, like, a whole new set of markers. Okay, that's all right. Let me get one more color that's just a little bit lighter. This one. Mm. That's okay. Okay, let's do that one. So for the hair, I want to just get in. Oh, that's too light. Let's just do the darkest parts. Really what I'm after is the shape. The overall shape of the hair. He's got nice hair. But you know who has better hair? <laughs> oh my gosh. Eric <laughs> Tip hates hair. <laughs> it's like, he's got an amazing face, but oh my God, when you add the hair, it just drives me crazy. <laughs> whoever his hair, whoever his hairstylist is, he did a good job. Oh my God, do I really have to bring up that jawbone? Oh my God, Derek Cole, you drive me crazy. Oh gosh, did I? Is it still too freaking big? Yes. Oh my God, okay, I've had it. I'm just gonna do this. Move everything up. Yep. Move it all up. I moved his mouth up. I'm going to move his chin up. Thanks, Derek Kleina. I had never heard of him before. I guess he was in the Anastasia musical. Okay, I rose way too long, but that's okay. I'll do that later. Okay. Oh, 
oh his ears too high oh my god totally did not see that coming He needs the neck. Yeah, let's get this scarf going because I just, I need it as a reference. Let's find a good purple for that scarf. Ugh, that is not purple. That is terrible. Yuck. Oh, it's not red enough. Maybe I'll go back to that red. Okay, that's better. Let's use that. Let's just block in the shape of the scarf. And then let's get some of that curl of his shirt. I mean, what I really, this is distracting me so much, that upper section, but I'll fix it later. A lot of this, as you'll see, is I'll fix it later. <laughs> okay, let's go back to her because I want to see now how he relates to her. Okay, we need to get her. Need more work on her face because I haven't really touched it. Yeah, she looks really dopey. I'll fix it later. That's the theme of today's live stream. Okay, let's step back and squint a little. Okay, let's get their hands better. So I think just some quick strokes to indicate the glove. That helps. And then I have to, so this is like the tightest part of this process. I don't enjoy working tightly, but it's like, this is the foundation that is going to make it okay for me to mess around. Oh dear, that hand is way too small. Okay, we'll fix it later. <laughs> And I think what I'm going to do, most of the top part of the dress, I'm going to do this with marker. So there's some distinction between the dress and the lower part of the dress. Let's 
go back to her. You know, I don't think she has enough hair. Let's see. It's constantly reevaluating. More here, less there. Gives her a little more substance. And maybe more at the top, too. More? Yeah, Counselor Chip, I have been using acrylic a lot. Some of the paintings I've been doing, there's a white background, and I'll move the white background <laughs> into the figure to shave things off. And I like that. I think it gives the white a little more texture, so it's not just flat white. And then I can play a lot more with edges. Like right now, this edge is really sharp. I probably don't want to leave it that way, but when I get in some acrylic, I can make that happen. Karasu says, I either rush through my drawings or take months and months to finish them. I also have ADHD. What would help? It's tricky. Everybody has a different way of working. And it's okay that you rush sometimes and other times take your time. Every artwork is different. I think it's good to have those different experiences because sometimes, depending on what you're doing, taking months and months is necessary. Other times, it is fun to just throw something down super fast. So I don't think you necessarily need to change anything, but maybe you start to do something that's in between. So it's not rush, but it doesn't take months. Like maybe something that takes you two weeks instead would be good to play with. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Yes, Carolyn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tahira says, your lectures are really knowledgeable and thought-provoking. I've got inspiration. To be honest, I look forward to seeing more of your paintings. Oh, thank you, Tahira. You know something? I'm not a painter. So the fact that I'm using acrylic, the paint I hate the most, <laughs> it's really, really funny to me. But you know something? It's all about fit. For what I'm doing, acrylic is the best fit because I can make tons of changes really quickly and I don't want to have this take six months because oil does demand just excruciating amounts of time to be able to do anything that looks half decent. Jennifer says, as an educator, do you ever think it's too late to learn to draw, create, and so on? Never, never, ever. The thing about being an artist is for the most part, there are not physical demands that hit you at a particular age. So for example, if you're a baseball player, most baseball players have retired by the time they're 40 because physically their bodies just can't do it anymore. But I mean, Matisse was in his bed at the end of his life and he was making collages. And there are ways to get around any physical limitations. I mean, I know a lot of people have disabilities and so that sometimes impacts the material they choose or the way they work. And so a lot of it is customizing what works for you at any given age. And we have a lot of people here who started much later than 18. <laughs> you know? So tell me in the chat who here started at a later time period. I mean, I guess the reference is that a lot of people go to art school when they're 18. And I suspect that a lot of people here watching live did not start when they were 18. Or, or maybe you did it in high school and then was away from it to raise kids or have a career and then came back to it. I think it's extremely common. So yeah, never ever too late. Oh, thanks, Kusai. 
your color contrasting is great, that it feels better than a photo. It's stimulating. Well, that is the goal, that ultimately the artwork looks better than the reference photo. It's usually not a good thing if people look at your painting and they look at the photo and they go, oh, the photo is better. Like, that's not good. <laughs> like, you don't want that to be the result. Yeah, Carolyn started taking classes when she was 51. A scarf and tee, late 30s. June says 48. Counselor Chip restarted at 61 from third grade. I love that so much, everybody. Jane says drew fan art of anime for a couple of years as a teenager, then came back, started really developing around 34 years old, almost six years ago. Victoria says 36, started at 34 as a hobby. And Anna says, most of my private students are retired folks in their 70s and 80s. Good for them. I think it's wonderful to do something new. Actually, you know what I thought? I was like, listen, if I ever had a lot of time on my hands, I probably would go back and I'd take the soon lessons. That's what I want to do. Well, because I played the oboe for many, many years. And I, I just love how deep the sound of the bassoon is. And I just think that would be so much fun because it's a double reed instrument like the oboe. And so I actually don't think it would be that difficult for me to pick up. All right, let's get in the blue. Oh, it's a little too green. I don't like that. Maybe this is the one. Might be too dark though. No, it's not too dark. Okay, let, let's do that. And then there's also that lighter blue that's on the right hand side. Okay, that's good. All right, we'll do that. Oops, wrong blue. So a lot of this marker stuff, it might get covered, but I need to have a foundation. Otherwise, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, and this also helps me articulate the shoulder a little bit better. And then that other blue has to come back because there's quite a bit of it here. It's interesting how they change the costumes because of course, you know, I've analyzed all of their debates outfits, but the shirt he's wearing here is not the same shirt that they had for Aaron debate. So it's interesting. I, I was watching a bunch of interviews with Aaron to me, of course, but with some of the other people. And they said, one of the things about these shows is that they keep evolving. It's not the same show two years later. And this show has been around, I think, for at least three or four years. So I really like that idea that the show is like a living, breathing organism in a way. And I guess, I mean, that's such a big difference from film where you shoot it and then it's done. I mean, I think the bummer about live theater is it's just not that accessible to people. I mean, how many people can afford a ticket? I feel like the cheapest tickets I saw were like 70. I got lucky that they gave me tickets, but um, I think if I hadn't got, there's no chance I would have done that. I mean, it's so expensive. Okay, now here I might switch to a lighter blue. This might be too green. Let's try that again. Ugh, yeah, that's disgusting. Yuck. This might be too light, though. Oh, well, well that's almost the same. What about this one? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just do a little bit of this blue here, and then I'll blend in some of the other one. Again, this is still so early in the drawing that so much of this I think is going to get covered up. All 
Okay, so that gives him his outfit. I think I'm going to do a little bit of the hand just because it's oh gross. Did anybody else do this with markers? You just can't find the right stupid color. I just want to get a little shadow back here because I don't want that part of his arm to pop too much. And you know something, this got too small because when I extended the hair, I did not extend the clothing. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I think for his pants, I, I do want to do it in acrylic ink, but I need some guidance. So let's just get a couple dark marks in there. Just so it has some feeling of structure and is not all over the place. because there's a really particular shape to his shoe. Okay, that feels a little bit better. Okay, let's get back to her dress. I think this needs to come out a little more. Oh, and I gotta push this down. All right, yeah, this has to come all the way down. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, I feel better. <laughs> yes, there are things that need to be fixed. Absolutely. You know something? His stupid eyebrow is bothering me so much. I'm actually going to take a little bit of this brush. I just need to cover it. It's bothering me. So th these are really funny. This is like acrylic puffy paints. They're made by Sennelier. I mean, they call them 3D liners, but it's basically puffy paint. So I'm just going to take... Oh, I need a better brush. Ugh. I'm just going to paint the tiniest little bit over that face just to clear it up a bit because it's really bothering me. Because th this is just so distracting. Oh, that's that brush stinks. I need a better brush. Oh, uh, yeah, here. Okay, let's try this one. These are just one sitting on my desk randomly. Oh, progress photo. I have to do the progress photo. <laughs> okay, let's try that. Let's see a little more. Okay, good. Go back to the reference. Okay, here we go. Bothering me so much. Doesn't have to look great, but I just I gotta get these lines out of the way. If anything, just make them a little bit lighter. They're just oh, so annoying. Like this, that is driving me crazy right now. And then, oh dear, his nose. Ugh, it looks so bad. Oh my God. All right, let's just get rid of this. <laughs> I'll fix it later, but oh gosh. What a disaster that nose is. So at the very least, you can see it a little bit better. I think that's more important. I got to fix his nose. It's a wreck. 
So yeah, I, I guess the reason I'm using the acrylic is just to fix stuff that I didn't do well. I confess that that is the reason. So I'll do a pass of acrylic later. But this is just placeholder just so I can see a little bit better what's going on. Okay, that's better. All right, same thing with her because she needs a jawbone back. That will help. Oh, and I hate that I added that stupid thing above her eye. I do think the eye is a little bit too big. Okay, not perfect, but better. And oh, his nose is so annoying. Oh, dark clean up. Making my life difficult. Oh, and his eyebrow is too round. It has to be more straight. Cooperate. It's better, but now ugh, I, I have to stop this. Like I, I need to move on. Let's just do a little bit more. Because I, I think I'm getting his hair under control and his face is it's getting there. It's it's still got a ways to go. And yes, yes, I know the ear is too small. But like I said, the picking is something you have to control. You can't let it spiral. I mean, it pretty much is right now. <laughs> he needs more of a smile. He doesn't smile enough here. Okay, better. But the, the face, <laughs> I'll go back and fix it later. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, like part of me really wants to go back and just fuss and fix, but I'm not going to do that. All right, before we get into the acrylic inks, let me take a look at some comments and then we'll do the acrylic inks. Oh, Anna's wondering, favorite oboe piece to play? It's probably the Poulenc Sonata. It, it's not a common oboe piece. I mean, the, the real tour de force oboe piece is the Strauss Oboe Concerto, which is incredibly difficult. Or the Mozart Quartet is a really big one. Or the Mozart Concerto in C. The, those are more the quintessential oboe pieces. But I love the Poulenc. It's just really really subtle. It, it's slow. I mean, there is one movement that's sort of fast, but it's a quirky piece, but I love it. I played it for my senior recital when I was in college. Manette says, started doing art consistently in my early 30s. Before that, it was maybe a couple drawings with years-long breaks. Finding art prof is what really got me going. Oh, I'm so glad we can be that resource for you. Because you know something? We get so many messages and some of my favorite ones are the people who say, I haven't picked up a paintbrush for 30 years, but because I watched your video, I'm doing it now. And sometimes you just need a nudge, somebody to be there to say, yeah, do it. It's very motivating, actually. I love this, Kusai. Each race has distinctive, exotic, beautiful features while makeup and fashion trying to standard beauty. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have seen when they do makeup and I don't know what it is. It's like sometimes they do the makeup and they make the person look more generic. It's like, don't you want to try to accentuate their distinctive features? But I, I think that's common. Like a lot of, um, I read plastic surgeons say that people come in and say, I want to look like Kim Kardashian. And 
I think that's sort of frustrating because it's like everybody has their own beauty and can't we try to really accentuate that as opposed to saying, hey, I want to make you look like this person. Good. Karasu says there's an artist started in the 70s, started using everyday office supplies. I believe Kandinsky started very late as well. Okay. <sighs> Curl the cakes. Let's do it, you guys. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm really glad I'm doing this for the live stream because I, I had been wanting to do this for a little while and I was like, oh, I, I don't want to take out the time. I should be working on the commission. But I was like, okay, if I do it for the live stream, it's fine. <laughs> oh, wait, one more thing though. Ugh. He's got too much hair. Okay, let's just fix that one thing. Sorry. <laughs> just, just that one thing is bothering me. This part is a little less. Again, I know I'm picking, but you know when things just really, really bother you about your work and you can't let it go. Oh, actually, you know, maybe he needs a little more hair up here. There's something about the shape of his hair that I don't like so much. Oh, maybe I think. Maybe, yeah, a little further down. Yeah, the shape is not quite, oh, he's got way too much back here. Okay, that'll do it. Ah, oh, better. Oh, good. Okay, I feel much better about this. Oh my God, I feel so much better, you guys. I mean, that's the thing when, when I do things in the live stream, like for real, I'll come, I feel like, oh my God, people think I can't draw so embarrassing <laughs> it's like you can't bring it back you can do a crappy job and bring it back and actually he needs one more shoulder up here. oh wrong color one more shoulder at the top i think would help i don't know why i'm picking at him so much i think his figure is less straightforward and less forgiving than hers okay i do want I want to do a little bit more structure to her dress because especially behind the hair, it does get pretty dark. So I just want to show a little bit of shadow because again, she has that triangular shape that's in the back and I need that shading to be a little bit stronger. Okay, acrylic ink time. Let's do it. For his pants. Well, so here's my glass palette. I want to look like Matthew McConaughey. It ain't going to happen. Oh, he's so annoying. <laughs> I don't know. He's not my cup of tea. <laughs> um, just test out these inks because you, you never really know what they look like. So again, flip to a sketchbook page. Okay, that's a good one. Let's try this. I want to see how dark this is. Oh, it's not that dark. Oh, no. It's too blue. Maybe I'll add a little bit of brown. Because I don't want it to look as blue as the shirt or vest. Right, let's try to mix that blue with the brown. See if that's... That's better. I think I need more brown. A little too blue. Okay, let's mix that up. Let's see if that's a better tone. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that really looks like black, actually, even though it's blue and brown that I mixed together. 
Okay, you guys, deep breath. <sighs> With the inks, there's no turning back. Like, this is it. So I'm being really careful around the vest. I'm not going to fill it in all the way. Leave some of those white patches. So down here, there is sort of a, you can see a tiny bit of highlight of his shoe, but it's not much. Oh, shoe got too big. Okay, let's go over that later. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really bad. <laughs> okay, so let's leave that there for now i gotta redo that whole shoe yeah i gotta he got a little too wide around the hips yeah he's gonna need some white <laughs> yeah that's okay it's all right you'll be fine dark Kleina. okay now's the fun part let's do the dress okay so let's do the really bright red first i'm just putting my palette here so you guys can see normally i wouldn't do that but i'm just going to show you what the red looks like so this is the bright red and again let's test it make sure it's the color i actually want let's see. oh yeah that's good Okay, now I also need, though, the dark color, which I think I'll mix the red with some brown, but let's do this first. So I'll do the Sumi brush for the smaller parts, and then down here I'm going to do the big one. Okay, so in here... This is where you can really have fun. Well, I'm trying to think if I should make it all red first and then add the brown. Hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. Maybe I will in here, though. Okay, maybe oh, I need the bigger brush. It's too small. Okay, let's go back. Oh, wow, I need a lot here. Okay, so here we go. It's funny because what I try to do is make it look gestural, but actually when I'm painting it, I paint really slow. It's weird the way that works. And I need a lot of ink for this. Like I really got to like load up my brush. Here, there's like a big chunk. Yeah, 
Yeah, I am going to paint right over this. I think it'll just be easier. Ah, so fun! <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> okay, let me raise this up so you guys can see it better. Because I'm starting to get bigger with the strokes. Okay, let's get some of that dark in there. Oh yeah, apparently I'm like stressing people out. Okay, I'll hold the palette up here. I know that was dumb. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> All right, let's get some brown with some of that red mixed in. Oh, this is bothering me. I gotta go in and fix this before I forget. This stroke here got a little mushy. So I'm gonna... Actually, I'm going to extend this down. I feel like that would be better for the dress. Should I have the dress go off the page? No, I, I'm not sure. Tell me, should I make the dress go off the page or not? I'm inclined to do it because I think it is a little weird that it just stops. Yeah, I think I should do it off page. But you guys tell me. I need confirmation. <laughs> okay, let's test out this dark red. Let's see if this is better. It's not quite dark enough. I think I need more brown. Let's see if that's better. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, awesome. Let's do that. Yeah, good. Okay. Blah. Come on. Ugh. Okay. Oh, I need to use the big brush. Okay, hang on. I'm going to do the details later. I'm going to do the big stuff first. Make sure that's really working. Okay, let's try some dark. Okay, I got to really think now. This this has to happen really slowly. Oh, not dark enough. I need more. Brown. You know, maybe I'll just do straight brown. I think the red is maybe making it a little bit too light. And also, I have red underneath. So maybe it's okay to just do straight brown. Let's just try one thing. just try it here oh yeah that's better okay uh, I don't know actually it's a little dark <laughs> change my mind let's do this okay that got rid of it uh let's go back to mixing it with the red I think yeah the brown was too dark <laughs> a lot of back and forth too dark too light that didn't work. Now I like it. Well, because if it's too light, I can always go over it. So that's that's a nice thing. I think this is too big a brush. Let's go back to the smaller one. I 
And I do want to do some washes. So let's let's do a wash up here. So we have some blending. And up here, I need to separate this fold from the others. Oh, I'm missing a fold. <laughs> Let's go back and fix it. Yeah, I missed some of this. Dramatic red dress says AA. So big it's off the page. Yes. All right. Yeah, Anna says the same thing. Yeah, I'm going to do it. It's a Sumi brush. That's what I'm using, counselor chip. Definitely my preferred means. Okay, let's let it go off the page. So we need some more red. And I think I got to put it on more thick. Gosh, I'm burning through this ink. Just so much of it. Okay, let's look at the shape a little bit more. All right, we got to get back into the dress. And I need some more like pure red in here. Let's get rid of some of those white strokes. Do a little blending. Ugh, paper towel, come on, save the day. Good. <laughs> Okay, so I probably need another value that's darker. So right now I'm blending, trying to see which areas I want a softer transition. You know, I'm gonna do a wash here. Because I don't want it white. I think the white is too much. So let's just turn this into a wash. This is so fun. This is the fun part. I like how this took me like five minutes compared to all the picking that happened at the top. And you know something? I think later I'll put red acrylic over this. Okay, so let's get an even darker red. So this is the spot I'll do some like dark brown. And here I'm going to be more careful. Because I, I do want to get more of like the structure of the dress. I think that's pretty important.
Yeah, that's good. I needed that value. value that dark is helping I think this shape that that's like the darkest shape so I gotta get that really in there gosh it's astonishing how much ink I'm going through And with these acrylic inks, it does make a difference how thick you put it on. Fun. I love this part, you guys. So fun. So here's the goal. Let's get Jojo to repost this. <laughs> that That's the dream, you guys. Aaron Tveit, he's not that active on Instagram. So I can't hope for that with him. But Jojo, let, let's see if we can get her to repost. She's active on Instagram. Makes me sad that Aaron Tveit is not that active on Instagram. Like, come on, could you could just throw us the bone, please? Please? <laughs> All right, we need dark brown up here. More paint. Ink, rather, is what I'm using. Let's get some lines that really pop. Because there's a lot here. Ah, paper towel. Come on. <laughs> Go. Yes, good. That's better. Okay, let's do a little blending. I don't like some of the edges. And since this is still dry, that is very possible. Oh yeah, nice, that's good. All right, I like that. So I'm just taking the wet brush, just making some of the marks a little less harsh. So I think that will look better. Yeah, she needs a little red acrylic to get this going, but I can do that later. Uh, I feel like I need something here. Maybe a little more structure behind that. to blend a little more. That's the thing about these inks is they don't dry that fast. So they're actually really handy for that reason. Yeah, I don't like that. That pink is not good. Let's get rid of it. Let's just blob some red on top. Yeah, I need even more red. 
needs a little more structure in that bottom left hand corner. So actually this part of the image is not in my reference photo. So at this stage, <laughs> I'm just sort of making it up. Bulk up some of this. How's that? So you guys can see the edge a little better. All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Carolyn says, I love the way it goes from semi-realism into abstraction and adds a feeling of mystery or magic. Yeah, that, that was my intent was, okay, we're going to make the faces quite tight and we'll let the dress fly. I, I stole that from John Singer Sargent. He does that all the time. <laughs> this is really good. Seven Angelic says, let that dress explode. Of course, it still needs work. I mean, I, I feel like some of these areas around here, I might want to, well, okay, one more thing. I like this wash. That wash, I think, is good. But maybe we need a little wash up here. Let, let's reactivate some of this red. Because I do think that's a little harsh. Ah, okay, that's terrible. No, 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 no. <laughs> Way too dark. No. Let's make a better wash. Ah, better. Okay, I like that. <laughs> that's good. Woo. That was kind of a lot. <laughs> All right, everybody, please join me in the Discord. I'll be posting images of the painting so you can see them there. Please meet and post live streams. Join our Patreon group. We have so many fun things like voice sessions where you can share your art and get support. I also provide extensive critiques in the Patreon group that I don't provide in the public channels. And most of all, you get support in a small group of artists. ArtProf has services, artist calls, portfolio critiques, statement editing, and personal art curriculums. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.